Well, welcome there back to is. the so huh? There it is. That's <laughs> look at that. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> Guess who's back? It's JD. I made it finally. It's only taken a while. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, JD's oh. back, and uh, he's gonna be working on uh, I think this project we have here. This Coachman. Mm -hmm. What is it again? Uh, Prism. Prism. Coachman Prism. Uh, it's rainy today, so most of the work's gonna be done in the shop. Be having fun in here. Yep. Um, I'm gonna let uh, JD get to work on it, and we'll probably update you along the way. But uh, is there anything you wanna? Oh, it's good to be back north. It's not nearly as hot. I think it was uh, the last install we did down in Arizona. Uh, we were peaking. Uh, it might have been the day after the install. 108 degrees. That's not fun. That's not fun. Stick around uh, to see how this install progresses, and we'll talk more about the specifics as we go. Well, wouldn't you know it, uh, we didn't actually show anything yesterday other than uh, JD and I getting together and starting to work on this. Uh, so let's update you on everything we've done. Obligatory bear shot. I know people maybe don't like too much of that. So um, <clears throat> here's uh, what we're doing here. Um, we're going to put the solar system right on this wall. A little bit different. We typically don't do that, but the customer has this cabinet here. So we're just going to make it work for them. And we are all about giving our customers what they want. So, uh, oh, back here. So we got some AC lines already being run down through the floor, underneath here, up through here. And I think JD is in the process of fishing them back there. We'll go in there and bug him. And oh, they're done. They're all the way back there now. Hey, jeez. Uh, no. He's working so fast. <clears throat> and then, uh, oh, there's the bear again. Huh. Uh, this is the board JD's been working on. We've got, uh, how many here? Or we got 3000 multi plus, a 70 amp charger. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 1200 watts of solar's going up there. We'll take a look at that here in a moment too. Uh, but he's pretty much got this about as far as he can take it. Here's a couple other things, but he's, <laughs> he's pretty much been doing all that. I finally got a chance to, uh, do some work over at the desk there and call people back and get back to people. This is great. Yes, solitaire. Yeah, solitaire. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, Whatever. Oh. <clears throat> when oh, are you? You're a Mac guy. Yeah. About that. Oh. Yeah. So we just play 3D chess. Yes. All right. So. We're getting our solar pulled in so, now. JD's. Uh, yeah. All sorts of goodness uh, happening. Armpit deep in this thing here. About right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to put the display here, so he's running yep. some cable. Um, Got our HDMI USB. Um, okay. It's going down right now. It's yeah. It'll go down, then up. Yeah, I was wondering, are we just going to leave this hanging here? But I guess not. No, I'm going to paint it. Oh, we're uh, paint we're, it to we're gonna, match. We'll put it under the rug. <laughs> we're being extra sarcastic today. Very. It's good to be back. It is great oh. having you back, bud. I love it. I love it. Uh, and then, uh, oh, back over here, we got a transfer switch and the main so, power box right so there. Light. So that's where we're connecting that from. Yeah, here it is. Easy to So you snake that through. Yep. Uh, it's really easy access back behind here. Yeah. Uh, that opened up a ton of, well, just space access. So mm -hmm. the wires uh, are only going to be ran exterior for probably about six feet between the water heater right here uh, yep. down over the floor before they poke up over there. And we'll nice. wrap them in, uh, in a conduit so they're uh, nice and protected. I like, I like the easy. sound of that. It'll be easy. And then uh, for batteries, uh, we're gonna. Do, uh, we, the plan originally was two SOKs, but I think we can fit three uh, underneath this desk. And uh, you know, um, again, it's it's what the customer would like, and so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, JD, what do you want me to do right now? Oh, don't make me a sandwich. All right, all right. Uh. All right. So up here, the plan is we are going to uh, put I think one panel there, one panel. Yeah. How's this gonna work? Yeah, sorry. Six panels total. Uh, we're thinking we could do one, two, three, four, five, six for 1200 watts. Not bad on a little. Uh... One, two, three, four, five, 1200? No, I counted six, I'm pretty sure. Je Cheers. Comment down below if uh, which team you're on. Team Sean or Team JD? I don't know. I won't, I won't put that in the video. I'm going to put that in the video. <laughs> what was that, JD? 
You did something. You got to film it. Yeah, well, that's the way it works. I'm not, I don't wear a body cam. What did you do? What did you do? This is JD got the, he got the board installed here, so maybe you're getting an idea now. You helped me, Sean. I, you encouraged me all the way. I Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's something I actually did on this one. I got the uh, display mounted here. JD did the hard work on running the cables. So uh, there's a big empty cavity back here. I just, you know, like usual, we typically tape up the HDMI and USB extensions. We're running the USB for power directly from the servo on this one because uh, these smaller screens, it's easy to work with and uh, or it'll power it just fine. And we could grab 12 volt power from here for our voltage adapter, but uh, sometimes simple is better. So that's what we're doing, keeping it simple. And sometimes it is nice, well, to let everybody know what we're talking about, there's multiple ways to power this screen. You can either do it using the USB power from the servo, which is over there, or you can externally power it from 12 volts here. Here's a, a big pro and con. If you cut off your 12 volt power from your RV, the screen won't work, even if this system's on. If this system's on and you're powering it through the USB line on the servo, this screen will work even if everything else is off in the RV. It can be very helpful when uh, troubleshooting or trying to diagnose stuff. Uh, just, you know, something to think about. I think I'm gonna get back to work doing something on here. We are just moving right along on this. Also, uh, yeah, JD took the batteries out of there. And he's, oh, you want me to grab some of those solar wires? Uh, or, or no, this isn't solar, this is uh, HDMI and USB. Got uh, my other friend Dave here. He's uh, He's been making some battery cables and prepping, what, what are we calling this? Uh, pre them. We're calling them prepping them now. Cause, uh, did we do that one? No. Uh, because, as we we always talk about, they're not perfect, and on these 12 volt systems, and really any high potentially high amperage system, we got to make those perfect, but or better, Absolutely better. How about perfect. JD has been That's in here little... getting this installed. We uh, Let's take a look at you that. Know yeah, I sure, I'll, sure. I'll I'll drive. Yeah, so Keep we driving. we got the uh, backboard installed, uh, multi plus charge controller, everything like that right here. Just finished cutting the covers for the uh, the raceway here. Got all those in. And uh, the, the fancy thing that, that I taught Sean and then he taught me a better way, the, <laughs> the end cap on there, uh, actually looks pretty nice, I yeah. think. Uh, so all our cabling is run down uh, in here. Actually, let's, ah, let's take this cup off. Ah. Who, who put that on there? Oh. Uh, it's running down the floor through here. Uh, get some light on. Oh. Man, the light's falling everywhere. Uh, so it runs down there right past this edge here. It's uh, it's all wrapped in a conduit going down under the rig. And then it pops back up way are, over. Are you, you can show them over there. Should I show them? Oh, actually, though, there's nothing to see now. I, I closed it all up. Uh, but under this uh, grate right here, uh, we kind of see some of the wiring in there uh, a little bit. Uh, right under here is where it pops up in the floor and then ran back behind here through this cabinet and the AC mains are poking up right there. And uh, the everything else ran behind this cabinet going up up there. Anyway, let's take a look at the solar up on top of what I've been working on, but I took a, I took a, uh, right. what is this? A peach Waterloo beverage break because <coughs> reasons. <laughs> Outside right now, it's about, I don't know, 85 degrees and 102% humidity. In here, it's about 76 degrees and 102% humidity. But anyway, this is what we got going on up here. 1200 watts, six panels. They're all wired up. Now I'm just securing the panels down. Hey Bear, guess what time it is? Oh, it's... I guess you don't care what time it is. It is time to almost finishing this up. Let's go wider. This is a bigger deal. The uh, prism is uh, on the last day here. We've been just flying through this because uh, we've had myself, JD, and the other Dave. Uh, he's been, we've just been rocking this thing. So I figured I'd give you an update on where we're at. This is how, this is working out here, I know. Um, might seem a little weird, but like I said, um, there's not many other spaces and this is the way it's going to work. So this, uh, little hutch thing is going to slide over it and, uh, should be good. 
Hey, Zuki, what's up, bud? Well, he's checking out on things, too. Uh, JD is hooking up the transfer switch. Yeah. And this is a question we get quite a bit, which is how do you connect your main, uh, basically, how do you connect the multi plus up into it? What we're doing is we take the output of the transfer switch, and JD's already figured out what that is, right? That's out of the transfer switch? Yeah. Right here. All right, that one. Yes. So we take that line and we splice it in with another line that goes all the way back to the multi plus input. Then the output comes all the way back. Over to this one right here. To that other one. I thought that was the first one you grabbed. This is the output from the multi plus. Okay. This is the, the one for the input of the multi plus. All right. And then we take the, in, the output of the multi plus and we wire that directly into the panel. And as far as the RV is concerned, you've always got shore power. Everything works. It's always happy. Yeah, the, the only downside to this is you gotta watch your fridge. Um, it, if it's on auto, it will run off of the inverter. Um, the gas ones are not efficient at all on that. And I've seen them anywhere from on the low end, 250, 300 watts, on the high end, 550 and above, and it almost always it's runs almost all. constant. It yeah. is. It's not fun. So, uh, I don't know, JD, anything you want to add uh, that I missed? No, I don't think so. Okay. They're pretty straightforward here. All right, I'll get out of his hair. Let me show you how uh, the solar turned up and... Hey! Oh, gee, look, we got a bear at the door! Oh, I was bear attacked earlier. <laughs> Every morning I get bear attacked. All right, we're almost done here. I've got everything secured down. And I'll tell you what, I discovered something, or I just put put a idea to the test. And so far, I don't think it's gonna be a problem and you might need to use something like this as well. This is this uh, three quarter inch board here. Basically, as you can see, I walked on it. And what I tried to do was put a corner of it on the support. Oh, I got one more to secure down. My bad. I'll take care of that. But uh, this allowed me to navigate uh, a little bit easier. And actually, I could even put it on the across ways on the panels and then kneel on it and to get the uh, secure the panels on the outside edge on both sides without too much trouble. And I think we might start doing something like this more often. I might even put some padding down on each side, but. These aluminum frames are extremely strong. Uh, and I'm, I'm away about 250, 240 ish pounds these days. It all depends, you know, day to day. I'm gonna own that. But uh, let's take a look at this panel here. Is it bent? Uh, I'm gonna say no. So there you go, kids. If you need to navigate your roof, even if you got solar panels on there, a three quarter inch piece of plywood. That'll work. Um, yeah, just got to uh, zip tie some things down, die core a little bit down, finish up that bracket, and the roof is done. All right, here we go. Got it all, uh, everything zip tied down, secured down. Ain't nothing on here going nowhere. Two dads have checked it thoroughly. <sighs> JD's uh, taking care of some last minute items here. He uh, wrapped this conduit through here that's where all the main uh feeds are coming from but i couldn't help but notice this rv let's get a little closer here this rv has a flux capacitor in it so, so it's working too i, I don't know what that's you think about. this can go 88 miles an hour <laughs> uh. probably downhill i'll let them know maybe they don't know that yet look at that look at that guy Look at, oh, hello, Mr. Zuki. We're lying, we're all lying down on the job right now. It's fine. It's cool down here. Oh, it is. I see why the dogs do this. Yeah. All right, so everything is turned on on this thing now. Looking good. Here's how everything turned out. We tried to keep everything as accessible as possible. We had to make some compromises, okay? Um, let's go a little bit wider. So where we had to compromise on our accessibility fetish that we have is, um, okay, our obsession with accessibility, uh, we had to make some compromises <laughs> and what, <laughs> okay. 
Um, we can still access the switch here. I think that was probably a happy accident. Um, but getting off that cover, JD, did you put the one thumb screw yep. on this side too? Okay. So what you can get access to, you can pull this cover off just here. You don't have to get to the other side. Generally one, we replace the screws on there with thumb screws and, uh, generally one will hold it up just fine. And, uh, between that and the raceway down there, that'll be fine. And then, uh, you can still access the, the fuses there. That's really important to us. And then, of course, the uh, solar disconnect switch over there. Uh, yeah, I guess the downsides are there are some stuff that's covered up by these batteries, but uh, as we like to say, these aren't going anywhere. We got our, our main disconnect switch here. This is the 400 amp die hool. Uh, those work really, really well. Uh, I think our plan is to probably get this out in the sun, charge it, and then uh, do a load test on it, and then we'll probably send her home. Servo's working, we do GUI mods on here like usual. Got a couple little things we're gonna adjust on here and there, but uh, this is working great for the customer. So I think we're about ready to get it out in the sun, see what happens. What do you think, JD? I think we're ready. All right. All right, now, you can't even see it now. It just nope. disappeared. All right. We got it out of the shop here. As you can see, we're in the back lot. And uh, here's what we're getting for solar. About uh, four or 500 watts out of 1200. Not great, but it is cloudy. Oh, we must be hitting some sun here. And then also take a look at the DC system that's negative. That is the alternator. All right, we got a little bit more sun now. 900 some watts, that's more like it. Pushing uh, 66 amps into the battery, that's great. So I would say this is a classic example of, again of why we don't always do the DC-DC managed charging. Uh, you're doing that for two reasons. One, you wanna protect your alternator, okay? We already saw we're only pulling a couple hundred watts, you know, 15, 20 amps from the alternator as it is. We're not overloading that alternator. Uh, these systems, they're made to charge like two or three AGM batteries those can draw the same amount of amps that a couple of lithiums can for the most part. And then the other reason why you want to use a DC-DC charger is to make sure your batteries get fully charged. But in a system like this, where there's 1200 watts on the roof, if your alternator gets it up to 90, 95%, solar will take care of the rest. So um, for a lot of these, I don't necessarily think it's critical. For smaller rigs like vans, I do think that's really critical and I would definitely recommend the, uh, like the new Orion XS DC-DC charger, or there's uh, direct alternator controllers. Those are really good too. Uh, tell me where I'm wrong in the comments. Love to hear you. Love to hear what you have to say. Um, if you need help with your solar on your RV, your camper, your uh, back over here. Yeah, we got a big Valor fifth wheel we're working on. Uh, if you're curious, how did I get into this whole thing? Well, I put solar on this uh, 40 foot bus RV there. Got 5,600 and some watts on there that pretty much can do about anything we want. Uh, that's been six, seven years in the making. So uh, that's where a lot of my experience comes from. Uh, if you need, again, if you need help with any of that stuff, check us out at sotasolar.com, S-O-T-A-S-O-L-A-R.com. Uh, love to hear from you.